Well, hi and welcome to my shop. Thanks for joining me today. Today is the day of the string. I'm going to be putting, I'm going to be replacing this string with a new string. Here's the new stuff here. And you know, I've done lots of radios, and uh, I've done strings on lots of radios over the years. And each time I do one, I get a little calmer, a little more collected. The first few I did, I almost pulled my hair out. Uh, so I know this is a stressful thing I'm looking at. And if I don't do it carefully, cautiously, and calmly, then, darn it all, I just realized something. Then, uh, then this won't go well. So what I just realized was, just before I turned the camera on, and I was printing out the stringing guide. Boy, you need one of these. And studying up, looking, just comparing the radio to the stringing guide. And I concluded just before I started the, uh, oh, Good news. I was gonna, okay. I'll take everything back. I was just about to say. I concluded. You know how can I take stuff back when I haven't actually said it yet? I concluded I had to remove this front panel, which would be a first. I, I've never taken these off. Usually, it looks like a hairy deal to get this off. So, but it doesn't on this. It looks like two screws, four screws rather. Off comes this front plate. And then this is all exposed. And what made me hesitate was for a moment I thought the uh, wheels up here were bolted on the front plate. But they're not. The wheels are attached to this bracket and the plate is attached to the bracket. So good. So we're going to take this off right now. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Just going to do it. Yeah, I think the biggest part of doing a string on a radio like this, this one's not so bad. Uh, I've done some European style radios. Uh, oh my gosh. They are really tough to do. So this, this won't be the toughest in the world. Um, some of the issues when you're doing a string is well, how long should the string be? If you're going to cut it in advance, maybe, maybe sometimes these, these sheets have information on it. They say the string must be a certain length. Uh, make sure you cut it a little longer if you're going to do that. What, what I try to do, and it's almost impossible, is keep the string continuous on the, uh, like, you know, not cut it. Just try to work with it as long as I can until I have to cut it. Now this, this particular page here doesn't, doesn't tell you how long the string should be. So another issue is uh, how many times around the spool here you have to go. You know, if you don't have a stringing diagram, you're going to guess guess wrong and it causes either uh, not enough loops around here it's going to slide too many loops and it could bunch up and get caught on itself in here okay wait a minute now the whole magic eye's coming with it we don't want that to happen yeah I believe I've never taken one of these plates off the radio and I know I have restrung this kind of radio and struggled with this plate still on. So I don't know what was going through my head then. Of course, I don't know what's going through my head right now. Uh, unfortunately, while I'm doing these string jobs, I have a lot of time to talk about stuff in random. So uh, here's something right here. Okay, so these, these guys, of course, have a bundle of wires going down in the radio. And uh, often the wires go right near these hot, hot tubes and they get roasted. And they get roasted like these. These have been roasted. Here, let's take a look at it. Just one second here while I deal with a uh, focusing issue. Here, there's the unfocused version. Uh, just give me a second here. Get it focused. Right, the wires here. I couldn't remember what I was talking about there. <laughs> so really stiff wires, and if you're not careful, if you bend them too much, the insulation will shatter off them. See how they're all so close together? You'll end up having to replace all these up into here, which is a really challenging thing. 
Okay, this is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, so this one, the insulation is off one of the wires here already. You can, can't really kind of yeah, you can kind of see it there. So a little more twisting on this, and uh, I'll have another project here, which I don't really want. So I'm just going to let this lay down here. Yeah, the insulation's coming off right where the wires go into the uh, into the bottom of the socket there, of course. Yikes. Now, on the stringing, on the stringing side of things. Uh, with the plate on, I was able to see part of the plate underneath here. I was going to show you this. Okay, so I could see these underneath the plate. What I couldn't see is I couldn't see this, and I couldn't see this. They, they, they never actually come out the bottom where it can be seen. This is what has prompted me to take the plate off. When I look at the stringing diagram, it's clearly showing starting point opposite each other. So I would say it's these two here. No, it can't be. So this, no, no, this diagram shows them going in the same direction. So the tabs must be bent down the same way. So it would have to be this one and this one. But can you not see? This is the one that's had the string on it. See how it's bent up? Shame on me for having lost the string off this right away. Uh, it's great this piece is on here. There's no question about this. So there's an exit hole here. And you would have a string come from here and go through the exit hole. See how these are bent? The, they blow a hole in the top of the wheel, right? They punch out a hole. And then they bend the metal that's been punched through back. You can see it down here too. And that becomes the uh, way the string should come in because then it's on a nice rounded surface. It's not on the sharp edge here on the, uh, on the other side. So that's a hint too as to how the string must, must go. So it must go from here through here. But look, there's one here. It could go back through here. If you don't have the stringing diagram, you have so many options. So many options. So many options. Have I said this before? How many ways are there to seat 10 people around a table? And you might think, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 ways? No, I think it's over 3 million ways to seat 10 people. So, how many ways are there to put a string on a radio here? Well, there's probably a good million different ways of doing it here. Uh, only one of them is right. So again, winging this, wow. Um, pretty, pretty risky. Now, I'm talking a fair bit about this because, now here's, here's a fortunate thing. There's no spring here. So we put the diagram like this and you can see that the spring goes over here because that's another issue. Which end does the spring go on? And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to ignore this. I have the string still. Uh, I could lay it all in and see how long it is and where it ends up. But the real issue is to make this thing work. Regardless of how it was strung in the first place, I should really follow this. You know, uh, the spring is with the string. It's probably in my bag of goodies here. Pull it all out. I pull out the pointer too. I'm going to need the pointer. It's all about the pointer after all. What's a string without its pointer? So there's a string, there's the spring. So we know. So either they, they, they ran it down this way, which is what I think they did. There's no reason why it couldn't have been this way. Now, what, what evidence could I find for the string going through here? Through. Well, it's got to go in a certain direction now, doesn't it? So 
we look on here, we see the one that's in there comes up and heads this way around, around and down to the tuning shaft. The other one heads out this away for this pulley. You notice too, the, the arrangements here, oh, I'm sorry if I wasn't holding that high enough. You can kind of see how if you just look at the pulley with the pointers up here, if you just forget all this for a minute and look at it, you can kind of see how simple it really is. Right? It's just two pulleys with a belt running around it. And then they've placed this wheel here, literally almost in contact here. So in, in my imagination, what, what I see here is you could have a pulley continuous around here, and this could be a rubber tire pushing up against the pulley, and it would drive this thing back and forth. But of course, it would be a little slippery. It wouldn't be the best arrangement. There are radios with slip clutches right in here, or somewhere. Somewhere there's a slip clutch. So when you get to the end, it slips. Uh, it's usually done with a big thin metal plate and a, a pinchy sort of deal on it. I have a radio that tunes like that. But this is not that way. This is not a rubber tire meeting a belt. This is actually the string coming around. So, does that help? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Helps me a little bit anyway. So uh, just, you know, the soothing sound of hearing my own voice. Okay, so spring guy comes up here, goes through the hole, comes up comes up from here, goes through this hole, heads that way. You see the uh, pulley arrangement, it doesn't exactly match. And this is actually raised up. It's raised up into this area. You, you can't have this string come back. Well, can you? I guess you could come back. And what about this side? It comes from the bottom up and over. Well, I guess you could. It doesn't matter the wheel is up. Dimensionally, I guess that helps the radio a bit because it lowers it lowers these pieces down, and this is what's controlling the top of the radio, kind of. Uh, so maybe that was you know in a design you know, a design moment somebody said you know we can lower these quite a ways and get away with it. Makes for a smaller front panel and everything. Maybe. Who knows? I'm just making this stuff up. <laughs> fake news everybody so now in terms of how to do this you know how much time I'm taking so I'm so when I get into this I'm not all rung out already I'm kind of pre-rung a little bit uh, spring up string let me run the string here up over back and around when you do these things the strings fall off these pulleys all the time because you can't maintain tension as a string falls off the pulley like in this radio it just falls right off and you're right back to square one. So I either clip it on these wheels or I tape it to these wheels as I go over. All about keeping calm and cool. Then it comes, comes back under here, up over the wheel, and then it goes around the far side, down here, around once, twice, Three times she's a lady, and around it comes up here, and then and this is the string here. And like I said before, what I would try to do is bring the string all the way out to start at the spring, bring it all the way through, bring it all the way up here, and then measure how long it is, cut it, and then fit it in. The, see, these guys, they didn't even try tying a knot here, right? They didn't use a little clamp. That's a really good idea because you try to get in there and tie the knot thing, which is probably what I'm going to do. It's pretty tough to get this tied in exactly the right spot. The spring gives you a certain range of play um, where you, the string can be a little shorter or a little longer and the string will just compensate. But it's only so much there. And how much is there? How much is there? So, you know, that's, that's well, that's quite a bit. Like a, like a good inch to play with there, but you gotta have some tension in this. Plus, in some of these, I don't think this one would be that way. But in some of these, for some reason, which I, as you as you as you turn them, the string gets tighter and tighter. Well, I, I do know the reasons for that. It has to do with how well aligned the top string is with these wheels. With this on top, the slider grabs the string and holds it to the plate. 
the plate is in front of these pulleys. So as the string pulls close to the pulleys, it's it's requires more and more string in the overall system. Let me put this way. I'm looking at it one way and you're looking at it another way. Right? So this is coming across, pulling the string out from the pulley. So by the time you get here, you have to come up with some extra string, much less than when it's in the middle. Same thing on this end. So as you come to the end, because the string is being pulled out of alignment, more string is needed and the spring will expand and you can hear it. Uh, I think the last radio you could hear as I got towards the end, you could hear that classic uh, springy, springy expanding sound. So I'm not rushing right into it. In fact, I'm not even going to take this string off till the very last moment. So we are going to start. I am ready to start. We'll pull off this little guy here. Oh, that didn't go very well. I bent this. I uh, really bent this badly. springy metal. Wow, you don't want to bend it too much tight like that or it's going to crack. Oh, I made a mess of this. <laughs> We're off to a great start here. That's a terrible mess I've made of this. Let's flatten it this way. Maybe I should put a new spring in. Okay, that'll hold. <laughs> Step one, I'm in a mess already. Let's pull that back a little bit there. That was step one. Step two, tie the string to the spring. Actually, this bent up end actually fits nicely under here now. Put this guy on. Three fingers. Three hands, rather. I need three hands. Where's my third hand? I still need three hands. <laughs> Come on. This is crazy. Crazy like a fox. Okay. Now, having done that, good question is, can I can I put this through here? Having, uh, and the answer is not really. <laughs> I 
And so you see I'm demonstrating that you really need to put the string through before you put the spring on. See, the frustrations are already starting, so I'm quite serious about this is all about maintaining calm, cool, calm, cool. I'm going to do this now, same way, same crazy way. skill level went up a bit. Second time around was a little easier. There we are. <laughs> hey, I'm on. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Runaway string. Okay, too early to celebrate apparently. Okay, now. We follow the string diagram. We go out from here, around the two, out from here, under the pulley, over the other one, and back around. Okay, out from here, under the pulley, over the top, and back around. Didn't I say something about uh, taping these? Hmm. Yeah, I did. Uh, we could have had some tape handy. to keep the string from dismounting off. It's not to hold tension or anything like that. There we go. This is where keeping this on, it gets a little tricky here. Coming across the bottom, I may not be able to keep it on anymore. And we want to go over here, we want to come down, down and around the front here. Okay, I have a very special tool to help me with this. Um, which appears to be hiding from me right now. This is, this is your moment in the sun. Here it is. My pusher-puller tool. See the end of it there? And the other end looks like that. A hook. This, this is like a hook in two directions. So I can push with it. Right like that. big wheel has two string tracks in it. It actually has the string tracks in it. Okay, so we come across. If you notice, can you see where it says rear and front on there? Right, right, right up in here, it says rear and front. That's really important. So it comes down where I am to the rear and then wraps one, two, three towards the front. So here we go. So I'm going to pinch it here to hold it at once, twice, three times, you know what happens at three times, she's a lady, whatever the heck that means, now we're coming up, okay so we're following the black string, we've made it all the way to the black string area, okay so he's, he's, his job is done. Yeah, they do have the string tucked under a tab that's not bent out. Well, there's one up here bent out, but no. It's interesting. There's two tabs bent out, two tabs not bent. Uh, are, are they supposed to be, uh, in a certain model, you use the bent out ones, and in the other model, you use the non-bent out ones? Once again, my imagination is running away with me here.
but see, I remain totally calm, cool. Like, man, it makes for a really boring video, actually. You probably would rather see me jumping all over the place here. Okay, now, can we tighten it up a bit? Okay, so I'm watching the spring here pull. This is to get an idea how long this, this string has to be here. So it will come down through the hole there. We'll want to meet here. Right where my finger, my thumbnail is now. Is that correct? Come down through here. This is on the wheel. This is on the wheel. That's three times around because she's a lady. There we go. A little tighter. That marks the spot. I'm going to mark the spot. Oh my god, I took my magic marker out of here. So let's try it with a brown magic marker. Mark that spot. Good. Got it. Okay, everybody relax, relax, everybody relax. You can relax too, everybody relax. I now cut the string. See, the thing is, about cutting the string ahead of time, you're gonna find out you've cut it, you know, half an inch too short. So that's where we want the looped hand. So we need a little bit of string here to work on the loop thing. If you cut the string just a little bit too short, then you have a string which is useless in the end. Do that two or three times and your spool starts getting small. And the frustration level goes way up. So I tried cutting it once ahead of time because I had measurements. There's a reason why I only tried that once. There we go. Okay, with any luck, this is exactly the right length. Wow, this will be my greatest, if this works, if, if this works out, this will be my greatest restringing job ever, for sure. Okay, I'm going to grab it here. Get under there. Go under, go under, go under, go under, go under. And go under. Okay, I gotta pry that out a bit. Bit of a big screwdriver to do it. Well, I just bent it in. There we are. Yeah. I almost grabbed the string with these, but it wouldn't have gone well. On you go, and release, and release. Let's drive this puppy. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we got a string tangle up here. A string overlap problem happening. Kind of see it right in here. Probably because uh, one of these strings is in the wrong groove. Let's see. So the holes the strings drop through are in the correct grooves. I think. Well, you know what? They're, both grooves come through these holes, so that, that's baloney. Does it say on here? Oh my gosh, it even says on here. In rear groove, in front groove. So the string, well, which one's in the rear groove? And the rear groove is the one that comes across and down. Okay, so that's this one. Yes, it's trying to get in the rear groove, but I've got another one. Ah, you know what? I'm going to have to pull the string off and feed it back through and fix this. I'll bet you that's where this is going. Because the, uh, yeah. So uh, Okay, so it was pretty good, but not 100% one time through. That's what I think. So right here, right where, let's get a better view there. Yeah. 
So coming onto this wheel in front groove. So this should be in the front groove. See, it's in the back groove. And then it will go right around the other string here in a permanent tangle. Okay, so we got we to do this. We got to do this over. So I'm going to release the tension. I'm lucky. Releasing the tension, but not really. There we go. There. Okay, I don't want to release too much tension now. Oh, I have tension building in me. I can feel it. I know what, how this can go. I've taken off my locking tape. Quick man, find the locking tape. What did I do with it? New locking tape. A new frustration. There's no end to this tape. Here it is. Okay, so i got to calm myself down now because I can tell I'm riled up. I'm riled up because uh, I was so excited about one time through. Look at that. Now I'm a little disappointed. i to keep the right frame of mind here. You can do it, Jim. Okay, now, these shouldn't fall off. I should be able to just pull the string out. It can't really fall off of here. I should just pull it out of here. So, so maybe we could just say, well, that was a test run. So it's coming up from here. It's coming over the front, which it is. And then rising up into front groove. Okay, so this should be in the front groove. Oops. You know, th this isn't the string that's overlapped. Oh, for crying out loud, it's overlapped way up in there. Ugh. Uh undo this all the way back to there. Three, two, one, she's no longer a lady. Okay, so this is supposed to come, I'm sure, in the back groove. Well, this doesn't line up well. I've got something going wrong here. Look at this. Look at this wheel here. Look upon that wheel. So it's the lining up of this this wheel. This wheel is lining up with the front groove. It's not it's way off from the back groove. But isn't it supposed to come up the front? Yes. Oh, that's no problem. Come up the front from the spring. Yeah, this is the problem here. This is the problem. This one's in the back. Put this in the front. Tighten this baby up now. Okay, everything good? Are we ready to go again? And then... Oh, wait a minute, this is supposed to be in the front? He says again, repeating what he just said. Yes, in the front. It's in the front. So that's the one coming across that's supposed to be in the back. It's this one. This is the one that got crossed over wrong. Here's the moment. See, without the string cut, I, I couldn't have possibly done this maneuver because the spool is in the way. So that, that's what happened. Well, it didn't really, I didn't really recognize it, but we have been forced to cut the string at this point anyway. So what I ended up doing, hey, what do you like that? Uh, smart without knowing it. I ended up going ahead and measuring the string properly and cutting it at the right length. I even put the loop on the end in anticipation for this. You see, I knew what I was doing all along. <laughs> That's right. Now what? Now, now what's happened? So this is supposed to come around. Yeah, it's just fine. I'm just pulling it up the front here by accident. In the back, please. There, in the 
back groove. I think you gotta allow yourself, uh, you know, if you've never done this before, you should allow yourself probably 10 times taking a run at this and having it kind of fall apart on you. You, you. Like you should be mentally prepared for that. You should say to yourself, even though this looks like a 15 minute job, I should be comfortable if I spend two hours on it, if this is your first time stringing a radio. <laughs> now if you're watching me and you're realizing it's all about calm, cool, and collected, and you're one big step ahead, nobody told me that. I had to figure that out for myself. Okay, starting at the real rear, coming to the front, over the top. Okay, we go over the top. Starting at the rear, coming towards the front, once, twice, once again. She's a lady. If I got that right, maybe I don't even have that. Uh... Okay, this is supposed to come up the rear. No, wait a minute. Yeah, up the rear. That's not whole. <laughs> yeah, well, she's not a lady, that's for sure. Okay. made it my first x-rated video by the way my first probably my last two okay there we go and the uh, everything I say everything anybody says on a video on YouTube is analyzed is uh, 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 analyzed for swear words and stuff like that bad language and other things that advertisers might not like. And so if I were to uh, like make a, you know, have my finger get nipped here and I yell out a dirty word, YouTube may restrict the advertising on my video. Isn't that something? That's right, everything I say on this video is transcribed, you may know that, you can read it. Actually, it's kind of hilarious sometimes because uh, the transcription is not 100%, eh? Okay, are you ready? Here we go. That's one end. She's working beautifully, look at that. Well, I certainly deserve a cookie for this. Beautiful. That that was the best I've ever done. Like I say, every time I do this, I get a little calmer, a little more. I guess what's really happening is that I'm simply getting older. That's what's happening. <laughs> hey, it's happening to you too. Okay. We can't really put the pointer on just yet. Uh, we, need, uh, we need to follow some special pointer on tricks to get the pointer in the right place. I don't think we can do it until the radio's back in the cabinet. Actually, you know what? We can put the pointer on, but it, it's not going to be in any way. Correct. Where, 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 where'd it go? I just saw it there. What, what? Anybody see where it went? I just, I just, just looking at it. Here it is. So the, the pointer gripping method's nothing too spectacular here. Wow, it's nothing to it, really. What I mean by that is the, this, the these little tangs, often people bend them down onto the string. And you're not supposed to do that. No, 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 no. There's a technique for moving this on the string easily, which I'd be happy to show you. Let's put it on. So it's got to be a pointer out front, of course. Oh, i got to put the plate back on, too. Well, we won't do that right now. Let's put this on. So, no, no, that's not right. I just, okay, let's do it right here. So we're gonna require a little bit of slack in the string here to, uh, to do this. Under that, under that, right there. Perfect, beautiful. So, uh, with the string under tension from the spring, it, this won't slide easily. 
But oddly enough, if you hold the string and slide it towards you where you're holding, you'll find that it slides easily. It won't slide back, but it will slide towards the thing you're holding. Now you gotta you gotta be holding the string here. You can't just put your fingers on it. Same thing, you hold it here and push towards where you're holding it and it slides easily. But it won't won't slide back. So that's the trick of sliding these things. Now you can hold it with a pair of pliers or anything at all. Now all you're doing is making the string go slack as you as you push this, you're actually introducing slack into here, which makes it move easily. But not the other way. Well I can still move I can still pull it the other way, but so that kind of ruined my whole demonstration there, but that's okay. Hey, let's put the plate on. Oops, sorry about that. Or should I leave this off for now? Would there be some reason to leave this off? Why would I want to leave this plate off? I don't know. I mean, it's only four screws, so if I should have to take it off for some reason, I can do that. Oh. <laughs> Oh no, okay, okay, a little interesting problem here. So the spring tension in the string is pulling, pulling in, it's pulling these in. It's pulled these in enough to change the dimension from here to here. So when I go to line up the screws, oops, that's, that, that's, that's a bit of a problem right there, isn't it? <laughs> Did I say something about I've never taken one of these plates off before? So I'll just have to powerhouse the uh, brackets. Use my muscles. But that's going to be pulling against the tension here. And I hope it's not a lot. It's actually a... Uh, no, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Just adds to the... Adds to the tension of the string and the tension of the video. Now, are you guys watching those home renovation shows? You know, home renovation, radio renovation, there's a lot of similarity there. But the style of those shows is not similar to what I'm doing here. I mean, all honesty, I am walking in my shop, turning everything on, and going to work. Who knows what's going to happen next? I don't. You watch those home renovation shows, and a lot of them, early on in the show, they'll encounter a problem. They'll say, oh my gosh, look at the foundation. You know what this means? With the foundation like that, you, know, you won't be able to do this. You won't be able to do that. You're going to have to go float alone. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Cut to an ad. And when they come back from the ad, it's on closer examination. The problem wasn't nearly as bad as we thought. Yeah. That's one version of the problem that really never existed that they introduce into the show, in my opinion, to increase the tension in the show. Uh, another one is, uh, these are old houses they're renovating. For crying out loud, they know the wiring is bad. They know the plumbing is bad. But somehow that becomes a discovery halfway through the project. Every time that happens, I say to myself, well, what kind of renovators are these? that they wouldn't check these simple things ahead of time. And the answer, in my mind, is they do check these things ahead of time, of course. And they know exactly what's coming. And they sit around with the homeowners, the production team, the writers, and everything, and they pick up on this stuff. And they say, you know what, uh, your house, we can renovate what you want, but you're going to have to have that tree in the backyard cut down. Here's how we're going to use it in the show going to pretend we don't know it until we know it. And then it's going to be a big surprise. It's going to attack your budget. It's going to be potentially tens of thousands of dollars to get that tree out of there. But in the end, we'll find out that your neighbor cuts trees down and he did it for free. <laughs> Just false tension. Trying to 
introduce tension. Uh, uh, some of those uh, renovation shows have two main characters who are in tension in the show. Uh, the one I watch a lot, uh, one is a uh, home renovation designer and the other one is a real estate agent. And the two of them are competing supposedly. It's like, come on. It's like a competition. Which screwdriver will it be? You know, I can make it up too. So. <laughs> You see, I think me and the others doing this kind of thing on YouTube, we're the only reality TV out there. The rest of it, they call themselves reality TV? No way. Hey! Check it out. So, so we're a little, a little off on the positioning here. So I will grab the string and slide it. That's the end. And now, there may be marks on here somewhere to indicate where the pointer should be at the end. And it may be on the back here. I don't see any markings. So the next most likely place is right on the, right on the front of the radio here. Let's see if they did that. Because you, you have to fit the dial pointer to the string properly. So uh, I'm looking on this, probably very hard to see in the camera, for some kind of mark. So the most likely mark is actually these end points right along here. And likewise on this end too. Those are very likely the point of it, the point at which the pointer should stop. Clunk right there and clunk right there. Sometimes in other radios, they actually have a little nonchalant dot or something hidden away on the scale here. Uh, you know, another indication is it has a uh, lin linear a linear scale down here, and it starts right at zero, right at that mark, and ends right at that mark. So that's probably the right place. And there's just no hope of me figuring that out with any kind of precision until the radio is right back in here. Uh, in the alignment instructions, it may actually come out with a statement about that. Sometimes right off the bat, where they need some alignment with a lot of words. Spread band alignment. With satisfactory method to use your scope. We haven't done that yet. Note, whenever possible, spread band should be done with real stations for B band. No, it's not saying anything here about. No. Nothing said. So, but I think it's probably a correct. See, if there's a, a, a mark up here and I don't see it now, and I put this thing back in the cabinet. I'm not going to see it then either, and then I'm going to discover it in the write-up, and then I'm going to go, oh, i got to pull the whole thing out of here. <laughs> or would I? Maybe not. Maybe so other ways. Anyway, I'm talking fast, talking low, talking too much. So there we are, stringed radio. Next thing I think I said we would do is the push buttons, which I <laughs> placed up here. Uh, maybe not. Not the push buttons next. No. The next thing we are going to work on is this antenna and see if I didn't boob it up somehow with the wiring of this because uh, my preliminary look I've already taken a peek looks like it's wrong looks like I made another mistake just in my defense this is my own radio back when I was working on this I was rushing through it because I had commercial work to do other people's radios and so yes I did a sloppy job on this thing no doubt about it but I also know it's my own radio and, you know, you can always come back in the shop after five years have gone by. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy your day. I'm off to enjoy mine.